Hey there friends, it's Marie for Tonic Studios and I'm going to be creating a card in this video using the Ahoy Sailors stamp and die set from Tonic Studios. Um, this is a really fun die set and stamp set. I'm going to show you what they look like and then we're going to make a little card. So let's get started. So here is the stamp and die set. This is the Ahoy Sailor uh, bundle or set, whatever you want to call it. Um, so these go together really beautifully and I'm just going to give you a quick look. You've got this beautiful stamp set that's got all of these fun nautical images that you can stamp and color. I think they're really fun. And then you have some of these dies that coordinate. Now a few of these dies will cut out some of the images, but not all of them. And some of these dies just kind of stand a Alone, where you can use them all by themselves and you don't have to worry about pairing them with a stamp. So I think these two um, die set and the stamp set, they just complement each other beautifully and you can do all kinds of different things with them. Now I've already made a quick card here by stamping out some of these scenery stamps and coloring it just a little bit with some Copic markers. And I've also used that lighthouse die to pop it up with some foam adhesive and make just a really fun and simple um, card. So I'm going to make another card today. I've got a card design in mind that I want to try. So let's go ahead and start crafting. I think the first thing that I want to do is cut my card base. So I'm going to take my eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and just cut out a card base for my card. Now I'm going to use my tonic eight and a half by 11 trimmer. I love this guillotine trimmer. It just cuts really well, um, keeps everything nice, straight edges, gives me clean cuts and it's perfect for card making because um, it's just the right size and they have all of these um, measurements lined out for you so that you can easily cut your card bases. So just by cutting in half my eight and a half by 11 card stock, I have two card bases. Now all I have to do with these is fold them in half. And when I'm making my card bases, I like to use my scoreboard and score down the middle here um, a line so makes it easy to fold and I get a nice clean and straight line and I just can fold it in half and have a card base. So if you don't have a scoreboard, you can also use your paper trimmer. Now the one that I just used was the guillotine trimmer. This one goes along a track, but I can also use it to score my paper. And I just do that by lining this up, looking at the measurements where I want to score it, take my little score tool, and I just run it along the track that is for the blade. So you can use your trimmers as a scoreboard if you don't have one. So after I have that scored, I'm just going to fold it in half Make sure I crease it really well, excuse me, um, so that this uh, card base is folded and ready to go. So there I have my card base. And this is just a typical A2 size card. It will measure four and a quarter by five and a half. Now I'm going to set this aside because I'm not actually going to be working on this. This is my card base. So when I'm done using my card front, decorating that, I'm just going to pop it onto my card base with some foam adhesive. So I'm not actually working with this at the moment. So I'm going to set it aside. So like I mentioned, here's my card base. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of stamping and a little bit of die cutting here. And I wanted to use some navy card stock. I thought that would go really well with the whole theme of the nautical Ahoy Sailor. And I'm actually going to cut it at an angle and put an angled layer here on the front of my card. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it, kind of measuring out where I want this to go. Then I'm gonna flip it over and if I can find a pencil, I'm going to grab a pencil and then just mark the edges so I know where to cut. So I'm just going to trace along the sides here. And I can see that thin pencil line on the back of my cardstock here. I'm not sure if you can see it, but I can see it. And I'm going to go ahead and trim this down with my paper trimmer. 
So I'm just going to line up my lines on both sides. Make sure it's straight and cut. Now that I have this straight edge here on the bottom, I can line it up with the bottom guide. Just line up those paper or those pencil lines and cut. And do the same thing with this side. And I like to use my cardstock over and over again. So you can see this one I've already die cut with, but I didn't want to throw it away because I like to use my scraps. If it's big enough to use on another card, I will save it and reuse it. So I've got this cut out, this little angled piece. And here is my card front. And it's going to layer just like that. And it fits perfectly because we measured before we cut. Um, so it's going to give us a nice little angled background for our cart. So like I said, I want to do some stamping and I was thinking it would be fun to do a little bit of stamping on the background here, maybe with some shells. So I'm also going to take my pencil and just really lightly mark where the edges are going to go. So I know what's going to be covered with my cardstock. I don't have to stamp the whole background because I'm not going to see the whole background. So I'm just going to focus on stamping in the areas that um, are going to be seen. All right, so I'm ready to stamp. I've got all kinds of my Nuvo hybrid inks here. I'm going to go with some colors that kind of fit the whole nautical theme. So I'm going to go with some browns and some navies. Um, so I'm picking out this almond cream hybrid ink from Nuvo and I'm going to stamp my shells with this and make just kind of a patterned background. Now sometimes when you're stamping, especially when you're using a new stamp that you've never used before, it's a good idea to stamp it a few times because um, it actually holds ink a little bit better if you stamp it a few times than if you just um, stamp it onto your paper the very first time you stamp it um, because they, they kind of get primed after you stamp them a few times. So just go ahead and stamp it out on some scrap paper before you stamp it on your actual background. I'm just gonna kind of make a random pattern with some of these shells. And I'm even going to let the image kind of go off the page a little bit because that makes your eye think that that pattern is repeating. Um, it doesn't look so confined to this space. And I'm just going to take these different shells and stamp them out randomly on my background. And then I have this little shell here that I'm going to add to fill in a few of those gaps. All right. So it's super easy to just take a few of those images, stamp out a background, and then when I layer my cardstock over it, that's what it's going to look like. I also want to put a few fun images on the front of my card. So I've already gone ahead and cut out some of these die pieces, and there's so many fun little images, so many fun little pieces that you can cut out and add to your card. I kind of really like this little... Um, what do you call it? The helm? The wheel at the helm? I thought that would be really fun to put here in the front. And right now it's sort of an ivory color, but I'm going to ink blend it brown. So I'm going to grab some of my ink and I'm just going to go ahead and ink blend it a little bit. Let me look at all the different colors that I have. I'm going to take a darker brown. Um, and so I'm going to use a light brown and a dark brown on my background.
All right, so for ink blending, I'm gonna start with my lighter brown. This is the same brown that I used for um, those seashells. This is that almond cream. I'm just gonna go ahead and ink blend a little bit on the edges here. I'm just adding a little bit more color so it looks a little bit more interesting. And the great thing about using the same ink to stamp and color your die cuts is it's gonna look like it coordinates. So you're using the same colors. So it's gonna coordinate perfectly with all of those stamped images. So I'm taking my darker color now and I'm just kind of ink blending all around the edges. It's gonna give it sort of um, a little bit more dimension, not look so flat and one dimensional on my card. Give it a little bit more interest. All right, so I've got our little wheel here all ink blended and I love how it just coordinates really perfectly with all of those seashells and I'm really liking how that looks against that navy. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and put this cardstock down with some foam adhesive and just kind of pop it up a little bit and it'll give my card some more dimension and a few more layers. I love adding foam adhesive to my cards. I love adding different layers. I think it just looks really great. Um, and it adds a little bit more something to your card. So I'm just gonna line this up, make sure it's all lined up and stick it down. It's gonna add a little bit of dimension to my background. And I love it. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and glue down our wheel right here on the front. So I'm gonna grab my liquid deluxe glue. And there's also a few of these edges that are hanging off now because I've got that background popped up. And usually when that happens, what I do is I'll take a little bit of foam adhesive and if it's too big, I'm just gonna cut it down. So these are tiny squares to begin with, but you can also cut it into even smaller pieces, add it to the back of your die cuts and make sure that it's an even height with those other um, cardstock pieces that you have on the background. So I'm getting my foam adhesive on there first, and then I'm gonna go ahead with my liquid adhesive. That way, it gives me a little bit more time to work with this die cut before any of that glue, liquid glue dries. So I always think it's a good idea to try to work with your foam adhesive first. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that down where I want it to be. And I'm gonna put this one down too. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a few drops of glue behind here. Now this liquid deluxe glue, 
It gives you a little bit of wiggle room. It doesn't dry instantly, but it also doesn't take forever to dry. So I really like this for um, all of the paper crafting. All of my card making is a, just a really handy glue to use and um, I, I just love it. It doesn't warp my paper or anything. So just perfect for paper, paper crafting. I've also got all of these other fun little dies in here that I could go ahead and embellish with. I like these little seagulls and the little seashells and the boat. I don't even know if I need to worry about coloring them because they just look really fun as they are. So I might just scatter around some of these little pieces here. Okay, so I kind of want to put them around like this and then I'm just going to add a little bit of glue to the background. And on this seal, I'm going to pop him up with some foam adhesive. He needs to look like he's flying above the clouds. And then I've also got these little seashells. Just adding a dab of glue, sticking them down. Little sea star here. And then I think with the sailboat, I think I'm gonna pop that one up on some foam adhesive. I've got some big enough areas that I can put a foam square on. I'm actually gonna cut this square in half. There we go. Let me just pop that one up right there. I think that looks really fun. I'm already loving how this looks with all of those different die cut pieces layered on there. I think that looks really fun. Now I think to finish this off, I wanna stamp this little scroll image and color that a little bit so that I can add it to my background. Where did I put my paper? So I'm gonna take this, stamp it out with my stamp block here. Let me grab that darker brown. I'm going to stamp this a few times so that I can get a nice image, then I'll color it. All right, so I'm going to use that one. Now this little scroll image, it doesn't have a coordinating, 
coordinating die with this die set, but it's a simple enough image that it'll be easy to cut out when I'm ready to cut it out. So I'm gonna grab some of my alcohol markers and give it just a little bit of coloring and then I'll cut it out and add it to our card. Okay, so I've picked out some of my brown shades of Nero markers. I'm gonna start with the lightest shade and just kind of start coloring in from the sides. Now, one thing that I really like about the hybrid inks is that you don't have to worry about the ink smearing or bleeding when you're coloring with alcohol markers. A hybrid ink is always going to, um, always going to stay put after you stamp it. So you don't have to worry at all about it bleeding or running. It's gonna stay right where you stamped it. So you can absolutely use the hybrid inks with the alcohol markers. Now I'm just putting a little bit of shading on the edges of this image here. And I'm gonna shade the inside of this scroll a little bit more too because that would be a little bit more dark. And I'm gonna go back to my lighter color and just kind of blend that out. Now typically the lighter colors of alcohol markers are easier to blend because they have more alcohol content in them than the darker pigments do. So if you're having trouble blending some of those darker colors, go back with your lighter ones and go over them a few times. All right, so I've cut it out just, or I've colored our squirrel image a few different ways. I'm gonna go with this one. I'm just used a few different shades of light brown and added some shading and details. And I'm just gonna cut this out. Like I said, it's a really simple image. So even though there's no coordinating die with for this one in the set, it's not hard at all to just fussy cut this one. All right. So I've got that all colored and cut out. I'm gonna add it right here with some more foam adhesive. I'm just gonna layer this right over our little wheel here. And I'm loving that collection of all of those fun little things on the front. And I think all of it, all it needs now is a sentiment. So let's take a look here. We've got wish you were here, bon voyage, you're the light of my life, long distance hugs your way, life and as Life is an adventure and our friendship can weather any storm. So which one would go well with this whole theme here? Let's go with Bon Voyage. That one's kind of fun. So I'm going to take my stamp block, add that to it. 
and I'm going to take some black ink. I know I've used brown ink for the majority of my card, but for the sentiment, I really want it to stand out. So I'm going to use some black ink and I'm using my black hybrid ink from Nuvo. And again, I'm just going to take my scrap paper and stamp it out a few times to make sure it's going to look good when I stamp it on my card. Just get that stamp primed a little bit. And Let's go ahead and stamp it out on our card. I'm gonna stick it right down here. Ta-da! Now, like I said, I already had my card base cut and folded. Um, and this card front is just a tiny bit narrower than my card front. So it's going to give a nice matted edge and add, make it look a little bit cleaner um, and a little bit more um, polished and finished. So I'm going to add this to my card front using some of my liquid deluxe glue from Nuvo. Just try to center that. And like I mentioned earlier, it, this Glue gives you a little bit of wiggle time, so you can go ahead and just kind of move your card front around a little bit, make sure it's even on all sides, and then you have your finished card. So I think that's so super cute. So many fun nautical themed dies and stamps, and you can pair these with all kinds of other Nouveau items that you may already have, whether it's the inks or the Nuvo alcohol markers, lots of great things that you can do. So thanks so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed a look at a few cards um, that we were able to make this one together in today's video. And I hope you enjoyed a look at the Ahoy Sailor stamp and die set from Tonic Studios. Now, if you use this set, make sure that you tag us if you post it on social media. We always love to see what you're creating. And make sure you subscribe, like, comment, and share on this video. Also, don't forget to tap that bell for notifications so you never miss another video from Tonic Studios. Thanks for joining us today and I hope you have a great day. Bye!